Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am back with a top five. I haven't done one of these since my top five updated foundations, which was a few months ago. And this particular category, I have not done in three years. <laughs> I looked it up and I'm like, I don't think I've done it since I've been in this house, which is crazy. And a lot has changed in it. And it is my top five bronzers. For me personally, I would pick a bronzer over a blush if I had to choose. I know some people are the opposite, but I really feel like the way that bronzer gives definition to the face is something that I just don't want to do without. Now, when I do like very super minimal makeup looks, will I skip bronzer? Possibly. But as a whole, it is one of my very favorite categories of makeup. I'm pretty sure it's my second favorite next to foundation. I have a lot of them. Even though I have a lot of them, it wasn't hard for me to narrow it down to these five because I really truly wear these way more than all the rest. In fact, I really just need to declutter my bronzer drawer. I could do with these five only. I mean, I probably won't, but I could easily and not feel like I'm missing out. I will also tell you my top four favorite bronzer brushes at the end, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna start out with one that I feel like has been in my favorites before in my top five, and I'm not necessarily saying that only this shade within this range is the best, but it is my favorite. I do have two others, so I have three total, but it is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzers, and this particular one that my that is my favorite is the Luminous Bronze Light. This is a fairly new one and it is my third compact, which is crazy that I could even go through a bronzer period, much less two of them and need to buy a third one. That shows how much I love it. I will be inserting swatches as I go along so you can see how these compare to each other and just see how they look in general. But this is on me a warm tone bronzer and the most luminous of the ones that I'm gonna talk about. I mean, it luminous is in the name, luminous bronze light. It is mixed with the luminous ambient lighting powder, which by itself, I won't use on my face any other way than a highlight. It's just too shiny, but there's something about mixing it with the bronzer that works and it is very skin-like. These powders are skin-like in general. I have one of their blushes on today. I, it's hard to beat an hourglass powder formulation and this one is very, very forgiving on the skin, very skin-like. Highly recommend it for any age and it's not too shiny. I don't like a shiny bronzer and this one is not shiny. I will say, I do recommend getting these in store if you have access to a store that carries them because I recommend taking them out of the package and looking at the actual veining and making sure that you have at least an equal amount of bronzer to the luminous powder, if not more bronzer than the luminous powder. This one is, I actually got this one online, so I'm not even taking my own advice, but this one is a little bit less bronzer than I care to have in these powders, but it still works. I just like to have more bronzer, less of the luminous powder, and all of the veining and all of the proportions are different. So if you're able to get them out of the package and look before you buy, that is a recommendation of mine for this product. This next one is so dirty and shows how much I use it. And I honestly fell in love with it the first time I tried it and I have had it for about a year and a half, and it is the Air Perez Rice Powder Bronzer in the shade Tulum. Couple reasons I love this bronzer. I do like the tone of it. it. Again, it is a little bit warmer. If I had to choose, I will go more towards a warm bronzer than a cool bronzer because just for my skin tone, it just works better. Together, they're a little bit warm, but you can see there's two shades. This one over here, is a little bit cooler in tone than this one. So you could obviously concentrate more on that one if you wanted it to be cooled down a little bit. But I love the fact that there are two in here. I always mix them. I have not ever used one or the other unless I am using it for eyeshadow, which again, I, there's another duo that I'm gonna talk about, which is great for eyeshadow. And I like having that option especially when traveling or when I need something super fast because a bronzer in the crease or even just a full like wash of color over your lids is one of my favorite ways to do a fast eye look. So the Aeropress, and this is a, a clean 
company, if that matters to you. I pretty much love everything they make. I wasn't a huge fan of their eyeshadows, but everything else that I have tried from them, I love. And this is no exception. This saddens me, y'all, because I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking this is going away. Why do all of my favorites have to go away? <laughs> because if I had to choose a favorite out of all of these, it would probably be this one. And it's the Jane Iredell So Bronze One Powder. And this is it, I just put a brand new one in here because I ran out of my last compact. Again, that's how much I use this. And they have one, two, three of these So Bronze shades. The other two have three quarters of a bronzer and then one quarter of either like a shimmery blush or a shimmery highlight meant to mix together or use separately. I like this one the best because I do prefer my pan to be all bronzer, but also I just feel like the tone is best on me. And this is the best bronzer if you have a heavy hand because it is very buildable and it does not apply too heavy right from the get-go. So if you have a heavy hand with bronzers and you really don't want bronzer to be like the focus of your look, you just want it to warm up your face, this is definitely one to look at. However, they just launched brand new bronzers, which makes me think they're taking these away. I don't know for sure, but I actually have their brand new matte bronzer in the shade medium, which is right here on today. It looks way darker in the pan than it looks on the face, but I wanted to show the alternative on the face. I, this is the second time I have used this, so I have not formulated a huge opinion on it yet, other than to say I still prefer the So Bronze one. And when I found out they were coming out with this, I went ahead and bought a backup pan of this because I want to, I wanna have it for as long as possible. Hopefully they're not getting rid of it, but I can't promise. But they're not getting rid of powder bronzers altogether because again, they've already launched their light, medium, and I think it's dark matte bronzer. This one I've talked about more lately because I think it ended up in one of my last couple of months favorites. And honestly, I don't know how I haven't hit pan on it. I feel like it's coming. But this is the Sicily Fido Touche Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder most definitely the most expensive one that I'm gonna talk about. It used to have like a sun ray embellishment on it, but you can see that is almost gone. I have used this so much. And I think maybe I said the Jane Ardell was the most buildable, but I lied because this is the most buildable. With the Bake Gelée formula, it gives a very, very subtle wash of color when you first apply, but it, it is easily buildable. And again, this does lean a little bit warmer, but it's not as warm as say the Aero Perez or the Luminous Bronze Light on my skin, even though it might look like it in the pan. But again, very expensive, but very, very good. And I wouldn't normally recommend a product this expensive in my favorites if it did not perform amazingly well on me, and this one does. I just can't speak enough about how much I love it, how much I love it on the skin. It doesn't, have any shimmer to it, but being baked gelée make, makes it lean towards a more skin-like finish. Definitely not flat matte, definitely not shimmery. It's right in the middle of just a skin-like beautiful bronzer. I know people who use this as like a setting powder. If you have a little bit of a darker skin tone, it's just beautiful. And then finally, my last one is one that I've also been talking about a lot lately. I feel like I picked this up in my playing with old makeup video a couple of I don't know, three or four months ago, and I really have had a hard time putting it down since then. And it's the Jouer Duo Bronzer in the medium to deep duo. And I never really specify that, and I apologize for that, but it is the medium to deep duo. And I will say I really only use the lighter shade. Every once in a while in the summer when I have my most color, I might add just a touch of that one in it. But the majority of the time, I just concentrate on this lighter shade. And then I like to use this one as eyeshadow because again, this was a duo. It's perfect for really fast looks and you've got some dimension with the different shades of bronzer. But this one is also not a flat matte nor a shimmery. And I feel like this one is a little bit more neutral on my skin than some of the other ones. Even though I wouldn't say that looking at it in the pan, a lot of times bronzers will just work differently once you apply it to the skin, depending on your skin tone, what other makeup you're wearing with it. Lots of factors determine how it's going to look, but this one does pull a little bit more neutral on my skin. And again, one that is not 
overpowering when you first apply it and just looks good. I mean, that's like the, the theme of the day with these. The reason they're my top five is because they're easy to use. They aren't too heavy on the skin and they just make my skin look like it has dimension without making it look like I wanted my bronzer to be the star of the show. Love that so much. Now I did want to add two of my favorite cream bronzers because I know there are some people who don't prefer to use powder products. They really are just a fan of cream products. So I did pull out my two favorite cream bronzers. Now, most of the time when I use a cream bronzer, I will still touch it up or set it with a powder bronzer. Not always, but most of the time. And my two favorite come in stick forms. They're, they come in all sorts of forms. A lot of times they come in a compact, a little tub, a stick, lots of different forms. But these are my favorite. This is the Clinique Chubby Stick Sculpting Contour. This is not a contour color, in my opinion. And it only comes in one shade, which is also not good. But I like it for a bronze shade. It's very pretty. It's easy to apply. When I have stick cream bronzers, I rarely ever just draw lines on my face like you see on Instagram. And I mean, I guess if you watch TikTok, I don't, but if you do, because I feel like it looks more natural and easier to blend out when you put the brush directly into the product and then blend it out on your face. So that's the Clinique Chubby Stick Sculpt and Contour. And then finally, this is a little baby of the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer. I think they've recently come out with contour shades. I have not seen those in person, nor do I think I'm really going to purchase them or try them out for any reason because I don't contour myself personally. I'm okay with the line of my cheekbones. I just don't see a need of it. So I stay away from those like ashier, grayer contour shades. But this one is very, very pretty and very easy to apply. And I love that it comes in a mini size like this because really, especially those of us who have larger collections or even just five powder bronzers, are we really gonna get through a cream bronzer, especially the big ones before they expire? Probably not, at least I know I'm not. So I like that they offer these mini sizes. And I think I said four brushes earlier and I meant to say five because I do wanna tell you my favorite brush for my cream bronzer, but the favorite to brushes that I pull for the most for powders. The first is the BK Beauty 107. I just, the fact that it's tapered like this, it just fits onto the curves. I like to kind of lay it on its side if I want to stamp the bronzer in, or I can really buff it in just going from the very top. I just like the size of this. I like the density of it. It's not too dense, which means my more pigmented bronzers work really well for this because it's not going to pick up too much product. This one, I can't even link because I have had it for, I don't know how long, and it came as a set and it's a BH, I don't even know if BH Cosmetics is still a company anymore, but this is from, again, years and years and years ago. But I wanted to show it because I do think there is something to say about a dense blush brush as a bronzer brush. I use this one a lot, it's what I use today. And again, I just use it to stamp because I don't typically buff my bronzers. I will take it and just stamp it across the hairline, stamp it down, you know, my cheekbone, wherever I wanna put the bronzer, and this applies it really well. Now, if it's a super fluffy brush, I, blush brush, I probably won't use it because I won't be able to pick up the product as well. And on some of them, especially the ones that are so subtle upon first application, I need to be able to pick up that product easier, especially for like the Sicily it's not gonna pick up on a very fluffy brush. This is a, the, my favorite type of brush to use for that one, or the next one I'm gonna talk about because they're a little bit denser. And that next one is the Sephora Pro Bronzer 80 brush. Now this is obviously a big brush, and this is for when I really want that bronzed look. I don't care if it comes a little bit farther down on my forehead. I don't care if it, you know, really covers all my cheek. This is also good if I don't plan on wearing blush for the day and I want my bronzer to kind of serve the purpose of both the bronzer and the blush because it's big enough for me to just lay on my cheek and get in both places with one application. And again, it is a little bit denser, so it is one that I do like to use with my Sicily or any other product that maybe has a harder time picking up out of the pan. And then lastly, if you like a natural hair brush, the Refer number 22 is fabulous. It is, again, a little bit larger, but it has that tapered design to where it's not gonna cover as much as this because you can put it on its side, 
just use that top or if you want it to cover more, then again, put it on its side. Very, very good. I love how this picks up product. Being natural hair, it really does pick up product very nicely. And I like using that probably the most with the hourglass powders. I, don't ask me why, I just feel like it works really well for that. And then finally for my cream bronzers, my favorite is the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Brush because it is super dense. When I'm working with creams, I want something dense. I don't want anything too fluffy because then it's going to apply patchy. And it is the perfect size, small enough to be able to pick it up straight from the component but slanted and easy to really press into the skin. So definitely my favorite and the one I reach for, pretty much the only one I reach for, for cream bronzer. So that's it, that is my top five favorite bronzers with a couple of cream bronzer options in there as well. As always, when I do these videos, I wanna know what your favorite bronzer or whatever category of makeup I'm talking about is of all time. So let us know down in the comment section below. I will have all of these products listed and linked in the description box. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.